Hey folks, welcome to Module 4, Preparing for... Online learning can be defined in a number of ways. There is no one clear definition. It can be called distance learning, e-learning, or even digital learning. Distance education is defined by the United States Distance Learning Association as education, uh, an education program where uh, students may complete all or part of the educational program in a geographical location apart from the institution hosting the program. The final award is given is equivalent to in standard and content to an award program completed on campus. So what does that really mean? What this means is that the learning experience can be enhanced by using websites, email, chat rooms, video conferencing, forums, and many other technologies that create learning communities through the use of the internet and a computer. Learning may take place in a traditional classroom, at home, at a public library, or even at a coffee shop. The credits that a student earns for completing a course would be the same as if they had attended a face-to-face -face classroom. Online learning can also be used with face-to-face -face learning. This is why many of your courses, whether it's your lab uh, or instructional courses, may actually meet face-to-face -face or via Zoom, and ultimately many of them will be using Moodle in some ways. Moodle will be that website through which a lot of things can and will happen. Online learning can also be synchronous or asynchronous. Synchronous courses are usually when you have a scheduled time that you'll be meeting with students, uh, when the students and faculty will be meeting together regularly, uh, such as a weekly class on Tuesdays from 6.30 to 9. Um, and you'll typically meet in a place like Zoom. Asynchronous courses do not have scheduled time meeting, and the student would, be, would decide the time and place where they would access the course content and complete assignments. One thing to keep in mind is when you take asynchronous courses, which you will be taking many here at College Inbound, there are still due dates for assignments each week, but you as the student can choose when to complete that assignment before that due date. So online learning offers students the ability to learn in new ways and gives the students flexibility in the way to do it. Taking an online class will entail a high level of interaction, but not in the traditional way that happens in face-to-face -face courses. You'll need to be an active participant, being willing to share your educational experience and to reflect upon the information that is distributed by both uh, the instructor and your colleagues and peers. You will need to leverage your time management skills and organizational skills. Even though the course is online, there will be weekly due dates and requirements that you will need to meet. There are many things to consider before taking an online course. Ask yourself these questions and think about how you might get yourself prepared, best prepared for an online course. How, would you, how do you prepare to be an independent learner? One who feels comfortable taking more control of their learning. How do you use self-motivation, self-discipline, and organizational skills that you have to stay on tasks with, with things in your life? What resources and habits do you have to help make sure you access the online course about every other day or so? How do you get comfortable with learning new technologies? How will you set aside time each week to regularly engage with the online course and complete your learning activities? How might you meaningfully communicate with your peers and instructor through the written word, since much of what you'll do in these, in these spaces is be writing, not that it has to be perfect writing, or, you know, uh, even, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about necessarily perfect grammar or anything like that, but you do have to think about how you communicate and what you're saying when you are writing, uh, whether you are writing emails or you are writing discussion posts or you are writing messages to your, uh, to your peers and to your instructor. How or would you be comfortable contacting your instructor if you did not understand a concept? And this is something that's really important is that it can be hard on the instructor's side to know if a student doesn't understand something. And so it's really important for you as the student to speak up to let the instructor know you shared this idea or you shared this reading and I don't understand it. If you're thinking that, there's going to be other students who are thinking that and if nobody speaks up, the instructor doesn't know that that's a problem. 
And then finally, how will you engage your peers and contribute to their learning? This is a, you know, learning at College Unbound is a communal effort. It is important that we help one another and build together new ideas and new ways of engaging the world. So you also want to think about participating and showing up. That is, online learning does not mean you are on your own. There will be other students and instructors in the, in the instructor in the course, the same as in your face-to-face -face courses. However, in order to have a class be interesting and engaging, it is important to participate with others in the course. This could be through the use of an online discussion board, the chat rooms, or even email. Be prepared to visit the Moodle space regularly throughout each week. There will be announcements that will provide you important information. You'll need to be familiar with your syllabus and the flow of the course with various deadlines and material to be covered in specific time frames. Each course will state what is expected of you, when assignments are due, and when new sections of the course begin and end. There will be specific deadlines for activities and assignments. Often, in the case of discussion boards, you'll be, re you'll be required to add a discussion topic, that is an initial response to a particular prompt, in the first half of the week, and then be expected to reply to a fellow student's post later in the week. You'll be responsible for keeping up to date with assignments, so the exchange of ideas and thoughts will be informative and effective for you and your peers. That is, it's important for you to show up because so much of this is built upon interacting that if you don't show up, then you can't help one another. You can't learn for you can't help others learn and also learn from other folks. So it's really important to think about planning and scheduling. We have we know our students already have to do this and figure this out a lot, but we want to emphasize when it comes to online learning um, to make sure you give your space yourself space to really think through what it means to show up for your online courses. Um, because it can be it can be hard, but it is essential in an online course to make a time commitment. And remembering that the time you spend in an online course is about the same time you spend in your face-to-face -face courses. All that's being left out is commuting. So really thinking about how do you set aside time in your schedule to engage in that online course. Uh, it'll also be very useful to establish a plan on how to manage the course and to be organized. Really from the beginning of the course, setting out when are you planning in a given week, and you can do this for the whole semester or you can do this week by week. You can do it day by day, but where are you going to reserve the time to engage and do the work in the course? Um, really just thinking about treating that online course as a regular course, except that uh, you're not actually going anywhere. So maybe you decide Tuesdays, uh, you know, from 4 to 6 p.m. is the time I'm work is, is one of the times that I'm working on this course. Uh, certainly want to make sure that you have the proper equipment that is a computer and the internet um, and if you're running into troubles with those certainly reaching out and letting your instructor know as well as where possible especially if it's uh, in need of a computer or uh, computer access reaching out to tech support at collegeunbound.edu if it's possible, you really want to think about where you can do your work, where you can study, where you can work on assignments. Um, sometimes you won't have, uh, we know some students won't have any choice, but it can be as useful as setting a space aside. And it can just be a desk, it can be a, an area of a table. Um, just really thinking about where are you going to do the independent work or even meet up with other peers in your course and have a study date where you guys meet regularly to work on stuff and be able to check in with one another when you run into challenges. Making sure that you read that syllabus, um, we always encourage it's worth printing out to review it regularly and to note the due dates. Uh, make that a living document, something you come back to regularly. We also encourage you, you know, keeping up with the reading, uh, the readings, the activities and assignments and discussion forums. It's one of the big challenges in online learning is that once you start to miss things, uh, it can start to have that snowball effect and you, and you may feel like you can never catch up. Um, and we know for some students that creates that, you know, they slowly fade from the course. If you find this is happening, be sure to catch yourself. Uh, be sure to think about how you can reach out to your lab, to your lab faculty, to your instructor, to student success at CU, and figure out how you can, you know, get caught back, get caught back up. One way of doing this is actually anticipating. Um, that is preparing 
and preparing that there's a chance you could fall behind and thinking about what will you do? That is creating your own plan of action before the semester starts so that if you start to see that you're you're falling behind or that you know you got caught up because life happened and we expect for life to happen, to have a plan that that you have created that puts you back on track. And that may include reaching out to your lab faculty or, or some of the things that we, we talked about. You also, again, as we've said a few times before, you wanna log into your course often and be an active participant. You wanna make sure you're going in there. Uh, I would say strongly it's a good idea of every other day. Um, and if that can't happen, then just making sure that you really are paying attention to, you know, when you do go in there, spending enough time so that you've caught up on anything that you've missed since you were last in there. Uh, and most importantly, and this is true for all of your classes, but particularly for online uh, asynchronous courses, stay in touch with your instructor. Don't hesitate to communicate with your instructor. If you have questions um, or are having difficulty, make sure you see them as somebody, uh, somebody to regularly interact with as you're going through this course. Um, don't, necessarily, don't assume that you have to figure it all out. If you're having trouble, make sure you reach out to them. And then finally, we know that many folks will be using smartphones throughout their learning. Uh, we don't necessarily, we, we encourage you to use the tools that you have to, you know, really um, maximize when and where you can learn. But we do want to remind or emphasize that it's not recommended to take an entire to take an entire online course just using a smartphone um, or even necessarily a tablet. There are gonna be times when the limitations of a tablet or a mobile device make working, uh, make doing the work take on, uh, take much longer uh, than it might be t otherwise accomplished on a desktop or, la or laptop. Um, and a lot of that might have to do, or does have to do with, as you're starting to write papers and things like that, having something that has a few tabs so that you can easily move across different programs is gonna be really Really important. So we just want to have make sure you have that in mind um, as you start to think about or as you start to engage in your first online courses. But otherwise, think about what's been said here. Think about how you can best prepare given the, the ideas listed. And you know, as you have questions, you can always come back to this uh, to this program and ask questions or ask for additional tips. And always you can talk to your instructor and certainly your your cohort and your lab faculty member. So we hope this is useful and you, if you have additional questions, please let us know.